Um, I, uh, I ran into one, I believe, in the kitchen. Yeah. And um, I, I could not figure out. She was so friendly and so shiny. And I was like, this uh, just doesn't seem like people who hang out here, you know. Because I would go to the kitchen and I'd wear clothes that I naturally would only wear around the house because you get really dirty and stuff. She had on like a little necklace and she started out saying, you know, I have heard that the sanitation crew here is going to strike. <laughs> I just started laughing. And she said, well, I, I, I hear that they feel like there's not supposed to be leaders here, but there's a real up and down thing going on in sanitation. And I said, wow, that's really wild. <laughs> yeah, that's all I said. And she said, um, do you find people are, uh, even though it's supposed to be horizontal, that they're not following that? Do you find that to be a conflict? And I, I couldn't figure out if she was, I didn't think she was a reporter. And then she was, what's your name? And a lot of people there, especially in the kitchen, were really funny about giving their names. Some people had aliases. Like one day I was chopping and I was in between a young woman and this other man around my age and he asked my name and I told him and then he asked her and she said, morning glory, but you can call me Moglo. And I said, well, Moglo, where are you from? And she said, a uterus. <laughs> I loved it. I so loved it. There were some people who really didn't want to talk about themselves. They didn't want to say what their name was. They didn't want to say where they were from. And it was, it was really kind of commendable because they weren't there for any other reason than to work and because they believed in what was going on. But this woman was, I'm Lori, what's your name? You know, um, I was just like, oh my God. I went home that night and I said, I think She's FBI. I swear to God. I never saw it before and I never saw it after. And I'd been working there for five weeks. Right now, the General Assembly is so, uh, it's more a division, I think, between homeless, especially the homeless and um, folks that are um, more kind of political. It's very understandable because these are folks that don't have their primary needs met. Now they find a place to stay, a place of belonging, and a place of autonomy. And, and in m many ways, I think that it was kind of their city. I mean, it was nobody's city, but they seemed to need it most, need it on a primal level. So when they speak, it's from an amazing amount of urgency and from not having much practice. So sometimes it's just pure. It's just raw emotion. And it, it um, becomes hard to move forward. And so what? Who else is going to feed us? I mean, I, I, would not, I would not get involved in these conversations because here's how I feel. So what? We're feeding them. Isn't that what this is supposed to be about? I mean, now look, there were some people who were clearly there because it was a great, um, they could do drugs there. And <laughs> I saw some people who were so high. I mean, there was one guy in line one morning, he was like, he was like, Whoa! he was like talking to the bagels. And his hands were all over. And I just went over and I said, I got my 50-year-old self on. And I just said, hey, my friend, would you please just use the tongs when you're getting a bagel? That's all I'm asking you to do. Have as many bagels as you want. Just use the tongs. <laughs> but I, I feel like my level of tolerance just was just got strengthened instead of weakened. And um, 
and, and here's the other thing. A lot of the people who are actually servers were homeless people who worked there. And they came there every day to work. And they were so happy to be there and they had a job because not every homeless person there was crazy, you know. Many of them, you know, middle-aged people felt a sense of belonging that I don't think they ever had. So it was really good for my tolerance, it really was. I went to a training recently about de-escalating things. You know, you hold your hands out, you ask if you're free to go, you ask if you're detained, you ask if you're being arrested. I wouldn't sit down. I don't think, because that people have really been getting hurt that way. So, like, when I really thought the other day at the Occupy Our Homes action, and the night before, I felt like, I felt like you would feel the night before you went and checked yourself in a hospital. Because I felt like, I don't know what's gonna happen to my body. You know? Because if you resist to that extent, if you, if you do nonviolent resistance to that extent, you put your body on the line. And I thought, I was like, what is this feeling I have? It's, it's like this really weird anxiety. And I thought, it's the anxiety you have the night before you go to the hospital because you don't know what they're going to do to your body. So, yeah, I thought about that. 